I'm Rebecca Burns and you're watching Information Overdrive, industry information when you need it. We are in Canon's booth at NEB 2013 looking at the EOS lineup. Larry, can you give us an overview of Canon's EOS lineup? Yes. Our strategy, because we were a late comer to this industry in entering the cinematography world, was to come out as fast as we could with a lineup, recognizing a hierarchy of program genres and production budgets. We started with the EOS C300. This camera, super 35 millimeter sensor, and tailored for onboard recording on compact flash cards. High-end recording, MPEG-2, 50 megabit, but tailored for the middle of the market. C500 allows you to do RGB, uh, 12 bits, and e external recording, so you can record uncompressed. So now we have a camera that can make movies, high-end, and the C500 also can switch to 4K. We followed that some months later last year with the baby brother, the C100. And that was tailored for the independent market, the lower budget documentary, corporate, educational, etc. Very similar to this, smaller and lighter, uh, being HD only. And then last but not least, we came out with a hybrid DSLR, the EOS 1DC. And that is a camera that can do onboard recording on compact flash cards of 4K at 24 frames a second, or you can switch it to HD recording. So if you're used to working with the Canon 5D Mark III, for example, um, how would the workflow with the C300 be different? Well, the fact that the C300 uh, records onboard according to an international standard, the MPEG standard, that's in every post house on the planet. Every broadcast station knows how to take that compact flash card, go directly into editing. So that's huge. 5D, you can't do that. And it has uh, things like the professional audio inputs. It has uh, time code uh, connectors. It gives you an SDI output. All of those things are not on an, a DSLR. So that immediately allows this to be given to high-end professionals in the television world or the movie world. So a lot of our DPs are torn between the C300 and the C500. What are the key similarities and differences between the two cameras? Well, the key one was a lot of people were disappointed that when we brought out the C300, the, it's 8-bit recording and the 422 8-bit. And they said, well, you know, for high end, we're used to uh, RGB 444 and with 10 bits, 12 bits. Uh, so we said, okay, C500 give you exactly that. And we give you that in the HD or 2K and the 4K, a 10 bits 4K. So it's a big, big difference between the two. Well, we reached out to all of the major international manufacturers, Codex, S2, Convergent Design, Astro Design, there's a GK in Japan, and we're now talking to Pic Picture Sound, I think that, so we have all of those on board now recording our raw signals. Well, the C500, as I explained, because we're trying to get 4K, uncompressed, and also very high-end 2K or HD, uh, uncompressed, we record outboard on these external recorders that I listed. And here we're showing the C500, and coming out of that is the raw signal being fed into the new Convergent Design Odyssey 7 recorder. And this can record 4K, the AJA is, uh, stops at 60 frames per second. But each of them is working on elevating their speeds. But this way, each of them uses different uh, tactics, strategies, and that allows different workflows. So there are some recorders, people prefer them for movie making, they prefer other recorders for television type production. So by having these choices of recorders, we're able to address a wide range of applications. We would love to continue this conversation online because we know a lot of you are doing Canon shoots and we want to know about them. So tweet, Facebook, or comment. Until next time. So where do you download Information Overdrive? Go to Cruise Control's website and click Podcast.